to uh, be here uh, with uh, with Supernova. Thank you for the invite, Xiao Wei Lu, my friend here. Uh, last time I, uh, the very first time I met, time I met Xiao Wei Lu, let me just tell the quick story about how this even happened. I'm not a tech guy or, or an engineer or developer, all right? So uh, when it came to Bitcoin, it originally was just like about investment for me. Like, oh, I want to make money, you know? So I went to a conference in Silicon Valley uh, about three years ago, and I was trying to figure out what was going on with Bitcoin and all these cryptos. And so uh, there was a famous guy online called Jimmy Wynn. He was a patent attorney who I followed, and he was going to speak there, so I wanted to hear what he had to say. So I go there, watch him at a speech, kind of like this, with like, like maybe like a couple hundred people. And then I was like, oh, I want to talk to this guy. He's a famous attorney that I, I like. So I sit down next to him, and uh, you know, we start we start hitting it off, and you know, I'm flirting with him, and he's having a good time. You know, we're like, this is great. You know, so, and then after he gets uh, gets distracted, he goes up another way. He's like, oh, you really should meet the most. He wanted to introduce me to somebody. So I was like, okay, who? He's like, I want you to meet the most important man in all of Bitcoin. I'm like, what? Whoever. I meet this guy. And I didn't know at the time what that meant, um, really, or really anything like that. But now I understood why he said that. And he wasn't joking. Because when we're talking about actual development of the, um, you know, taking the Bitcoin code and making it into, turning it into programmable money, that's what he did, you know, for the first time on Bitcoin, just like on Ethereum. Ethereum was just a second a protocol. It's already existed on Bitcoin the whole time. But it took a while to kind of put it together. And now here you go, you get to hear from the guy who actually made it all happen. All right, so Xiao Wei Lu, the floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, thanks for always uh, supporting me wherever I go. Uh, so, which way do you? Yeah, if you want to stand on the either either side, I would say, yeah, see, stand on the right there, let's see. Uh, stand over here. Yeah. Yep. All right, feels like a fashion show. Anyway, so hi everyone, thanks for coming, and uh, thanks Nova for bringing this uh, uh, meetup again, and uh, see a lot of you know faces where we met uh, last time in Palado. So uh, this is Chao Wei, I'm founder of this company called Asquip. So what we do in simple terms, we make you know uh, developers. We make their life much easier and quicker to build any kind of apps they want on, you know, so-called Bitcoin blockchains. Okay. When I say Bitcoin, I include a lot of different forks, you know, or derivative, uh, similar chains. Like for example, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, even Dogecoin, and now some layer twos, which also uses the Bitcoin Core network. Okay. So if you are coming from. Uh, how many people here come from, uh, let's say, have some experience in Ethereum work? I know you have, right? Raise your hand, Ethereum. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. So we are pretty much, uh, if you you know, Ethereum, you probably heard about the, some companies called, uh, you know, Infra or Alchemy or Quick Node. So we are pretty much like that, but for Bitcoin. Okay, all right. Uh, can you go to the next? And uh, another quick, quick round. How many, who here has uh, some Bitcoin? Doesn't matter how much, but uh, some Bitcoin. Okay. Yes. Good, good, good. All right, good. All right. So, how many people have used, uh, let's say, Bitcoin? Okay. Anyone? Bitcoin. How many people have used, uh, who has used Bitcoin smart contract? Let's put it that way. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, the truth is, if you have heard about, if you have Bitcoin, you are always using Bitcoin smart contract to lock up your coin. So that's what, what we do. Okay, last survey. How many people have heard that the term called off-cat? Off-cat, anybody have heard about it? Okay, what is it? What does it do? Or what, 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 uh, how do you hear about it? What is it? You spoke about it at the last meetup. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got a recurring customer here, so that's good. Okay. okay, all right. So for people who uh, have not heard about this term, so basically, you people heard about always hear about let's say Ethereum, Solana. They have smart contract, they have tokens, everything. But a lot of people they don't know is, you know, Bitcoin has this, not latent, not not like all cap. It has this since day one. Okay, that's that's the biggest let's say misconception. Even if you are in crypto, a lot most people don't know this. Even you have a Bitcoin when you lock it up, when you put in send to somebody's address, that's actually a smart contract protecting 
the coins from being used by accessed by anybody else other than the owner. Okay. So you don't have to trust me on this, but this for people can read a little bit. So here, basically, what is the original quote from you know the, the guy himself, Satoshi Nakamoto? This this is I think from 2009 from Bitcoin Talk dot org. Okay. Basically, what it says here, when I design Bitcoin, I don't want it just to be payment. I want to be have, I want to be, be to be future proof, meaning. I don't know what uh, other people is going to use Bitcoin for. Well, for example, arbitration, or multi, uh, you know, multi sig or you know, zero knowledge per se. You know, they can use it any way they want. So for that to happen, I don't want to limit what kind of things people can do. Because every time, if I want to limit, oh, maybe every time I'm going to change the product a little bit. But he doesn't want to do that. He said, I, I'm going to have the, the best platform you guys can build on called the Bitcoin script. So Bitcoin script, for people who think about, it's like a vir virtual machine, right? So Ethereum has Ethereum virtual machine, and then Solana has its own machine, virtual machine. And then Bitcoin went ship on day one in 2009, January 3rd. It has this virtual machine come with it, okay? So it, the, the instruction set for this, for this virtual machine is called, just called Bitcoin script, and it has a bunch of all codes. I think one of the most famous lately is called all cash. Okay, so I'm going to talk about you know what is all cash and uh, give you a sense. Hey, what? How does escrow come into play? And what if you have all cash? What kind of things you can do? It, it looks like a very smallish trick, but this simple change will enable you to do. It. Actually, in the you know in the computer science jargon called it Turing complete. Basically, meaning any kind of arbitrary complex or sophisticated smart contract, if you can run it on any other blockchain, you are going to, you can run it on Bitcoin mainnet, if it has a okay. okay. So, uh, to, to, yeah, maybe it's, it's okay, it's okay. So, as I said earlier, if you have any kind of Bitcoin, you probably heard about this term called the UTXO. So, Bitcoin is very different model. Uh, it's not like, say, account model. It's like, hey, you have a bank account, in Chase or you know Bank of America, what not? You have a associate with your name. How much? What's what's a, what's your balance? In Bitcoin model, it's more like a so-called cash, right? That's why the white paper even called it. It's an like electronic cash system. Okay. So it's like you have a wallet. Okay. How many how many dollars you have in the wallet? It's not just one piece. It, it's multiple, you know, denominated in different, you know, smaller denomination, right? One dollar, two dollar. You may have. Two uh, one dollar bill or one five or you know three fifty dollar bill. Okay, so each bill you can think about this so called uh, in the output of some Bitcoin transaction. The Bitcoin transaction in in the rough sense you have inputs, you have outputs, right? So all your Bitcoins that you have that your wallet shows you, maybe let's say you have fifty Bitcoins, they are in separate individual let's say individual outputs, and those outputs if they are not spent yet. You know, unspent, right? Transaction output. They are valid Bitcoin that you can you can spend later. Okay. So when I say Bitcoin smart contract, what it is? Essentially, for each output, right, that, that your Bitcoins are, you need some kind of uh, locking mechanism, right? Because otherwise, if you don't put a lock there, let's say you have one Bitcoin, some here, so anybody can spend it. That's not good. Definitely not good, right? Or electronic cash. So that's a lock on top of it. And then wherever you want to spend it, you actually create another transaction. You know, have an input that points to that output. Hey, I want to spend that the bitcoins in that output, and you are going to provide a so-called key. And if the key and the lock can match, that means you are allowed to spend the bitcoins. That's the simplest way to understand, you know, so-called bitcoin smart contract. Why do I call it a contract? Because uh, in the most popular way to lock it, you have so-called, uh, you know, you have your private key, right? You put uh, in your address. The thing about it is, it, it's using, you know public key, public cryptography, you have public key and you have private key. And then lock says, hey, you only you can only lock it if you have the, the corresponding uh, private key. So you can, you can, I mean, in practice, it's using digital signature, but yeah, it's actually verified you have the key. You have the key. But that's the only one type of lock, right? So you can also have, let's say, uh, hash lock, which is kind of like a passcode, you know, if, if you're like, uh, 
go to your, your safe, right? You may not only have your key, but a lot of times you may want to put your some kind of like a secret keyword, right? So that's another type of lock you can have. Or you can even have more uh, fancier lock, let's say, you know, time lock. Let's say you want to deposit some Bitcoin, you know, you really want to hodl, take hodl to the next extreme level. You say, hey, I cannot move this coin. Doesn't matter what happens until, let's say, year 2049. Right? Let's say you can use time to lock it. And also, because it's programmable, you can combine all this. Yeah, you say, hey, three out of five can unlock it before this time. Otherwise, you know, the, the manager can unlock it. You can, you can have arbitrary con contract, uh, uh, complex contract. That's what I mean you know, when I say Bitcoin's contract. So even today, your Bitcoin is protected by some Bitcoin smart contract as we speak. Yeah, and a good example of that, wouldn't it be a, a trust-based model? For example, like if you wanted to put some Bitcoin in trust for your okay. for your yeah. kids. Yeah, I see what it means. Yeah, that's another way to put it, right? You can think about, a, you can have a smart contract that you put them in, you know, trust. In that way, I wouldn't say you get rid of the lawyer, but you can, you can minimize a lot of paperwork by the lawyer. Basically says, hey, if I put some Bitcoins to my, let's say, descendants, if something happens to me, this is the way that the, the coin is going to be distributed. You know, 50%, I don't know, go to the sun, uh, another 50 go to the lot. And because everything, right, it's a contract, right? It's a smart contract, it's encoded and uh, enforced by Bitcoin. That, that's, I wouldn't say there's no dispute, but there will be less dispute. Without that, they're relying on finding the, the private key, wouldn't yeah. they, if somebody passed away? Yeah, that's, an, yeah, that's a very good use case of, you know, so-called Bitcoin smart contract. So just want to give you a sense. I think somebody just put this almost like a periodic table, you know, yesterday. I think I just got it today. So it's, uh, what does it actually show? It's not you are showing. It's not you are showing different elements, right? You have, you have uh, you know, uh, carbon. No, no, no. You are showing so-called Bitcoin script, okay? Opcodes. You know, it's about about 100 opcodes. But in the history of Bitcoin, for various reasons, historical reasons, some of them. They are like, they are like uh, deleted, they are disabled temporarily. For example, this opcode called opcat. I think which most of our time today we're talking about this specific opcat. So think about all these are uh, instruction sets for the Bitcoin virtual machine. You can add two things, you can, you can do hashes, you can check signatures, that all the basic uh, instructions for the Bitcoin virtual machine. Can you go next? So here's one slight issue, okay? So if you look at all the previous, you know, uh, the opcodes in the previous slide, okay, how many of the developers here? Developers? Okay, okay. Okay, how, how comfortable are you programming any kind of contract using opcodes? Okay, uh, do you know how to <coughs> program opcodes? <laughs> you program opcodes, sir? You, you program opcodes directly or? Not really. Yeah, this is like, this is like in Ethereum world. Uh, you have uh, EVM, they also have a bunch of Let's say of course, but I personally I've been in crypto since 2016. I don't any I don't know anybody who's coding in let's say EVM of course. Right? You need some kind of high level language, which is Solidity or if somebody they want to use Python, -ish, they use Viper. But bottom line, you need some kind of like a developer tools like such as high level language and different all the, the SDKs, libraries, all these things to, to help you to, to develop. Because otherwise it's going to be super, super long and error prone to develop any kind of a non-trivial smart contract. So that's what the ask of coming to play. Are you good with that? So, you know, easiest way to understand what is, what is ask okay. So we developed this language also called ask that's what the, the name come from. So it's pretty much like a solidity but for Bitcoin. That means, forget about all this like 100-ish opcodes in the like, periodic, periodic table. Right? For now, you can use some kind of modern programming tools to help you to write any kind of uh, smart contract that can run on Bitcoin, okay? So it's, it's not something new. It, it just combines, it, it doesn't take, it doesn't run on some layer two or side chain or lightning, it doesn't run on anything. It's directly run on Bitcoin. How does this work? So think about, this is a high-level language, but uh, 
almost like a JavaScript. Yeah, to be precise, it's a TypeScript. So it's pretty much a JavaScript, but with uh, types. So that you can write the same thing. The contract in high level language, JavaScript, and then it can pass down to native Bitcoin script, and then you can run the Bitcoin without anything. You don't have to change the Bitcoin protocol, you don't run on layer two, you don't need to have some kind of like a, a bridge with central operators, you don't need to roll up and nothing. You just code this in JavaScript, and then if we just handle all the logic to run, have it run on native Bitcoin. Okay. This is a simple example. Basically, this what this contract does is what the Bitcoin address is. It's actually checking, hey, the, the public key hashes to an address, address is it's just hash of the public key, and then it checks the signature whether it matches the public key. So it's much, much easier to work with than just raw opcodes. Here we go. All right, this is another example. So how many people have heard about this term here? B2VM. BitVM. BitVM, okay. Okay. No. Okay. I think, okay, this side is more Bitcoin today, it feels like. Okay. <laughs> Nobody hears about B BPM today? Never heard of it. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a way to program a complex smart contract on Bitcoin today without, let's say, opcat. It's the easiest way to, to put it that way. So, you know, opcat, you know, is some opcode. People are debating whether to activate, but still it's not. So, this is one way to get around but then you have some limitations. But we don't have to talk about the details. But I just go on to give you a sense. Is that, you VM, okay, is that a layer two? Uh, you can be used to help to build layer twos. I think. Well, is it a layer two bit VM or is it? Uh, it's a technology, it can be used to build layer two, but okay. it's also used for some other purpose. So, like a bridge. Okay. So I, I, you don't know, you don't have to know any details about this, but basically if you build, if you, uh, let's say program the contract, BPM contract in opcodes, that's what it looks like on the left. And then this is the equivalent, how you you know code it in let's say high level modern language like uh, TypeScript. So you can see it's, on the left is almost unreadable, it's like some kind of like a technical web level. It's very difficult to, to read, much less to reason or test to debug. It's very it's almost virtually impossible. I don't know how to do it. But this genius they figured out. But for me, I'm like regular guy. I just want to code this in some language I'm already familiar with. Okay, that's high level. Yeah. All right. Any questions so far? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So one question about how, how you deploy uh, things you wrote into the script. Do you like create craft a transaction and run it through? Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So so eventually all this compiled down to so called the, the into the log, which is placed into the output and then broadcast. But we have the framework. This is the one piece. So think about S script is a is a whole framework. So one one part is help you to write the smart contract, but another big framework uh, is to also help you to facilitate all this like uh, almost like repetitive work. Like how do you compile? How do you wrap all this into the output script? How do you sign inputs, get change, and then broadcast to the miners? We we handle all the all the details in this. So you, for you, you just download this, and then write a contract, and then you, you, tap, you connect it to the wallet, and then everybody, everything will be like under, under the roof. So we make almost very similar to experience of when you develop on Ethereum. And you don't, you don't, you never touch about, oh, how do I create transaction? Or how do I, you know, put the, you know, opcodes in? How do I connect to some, Ethereum knows all this is a wrap, it's abstracted away from okay. um, one, one follow up question. So, how do people use that uh, contract that you've already deployed? Do they also submit transactions through S script? Yes, yes. So, usually, as I said in the uh, UTXO model, so when you, when you, when you uh, deploy the contract in Ethereum term, that basically means you are locking up some coin. So, how do you, when you unlock it, it's equivalent to you know call this contract right? because literally you have fun different functions right? uh, uh, function public function A B C and then whatever uh, condition you want to lock unlock it you just literally dot method call the name it's it, it's almost uh, equivalent to the Ethereum developer yeah all right good okay 
Okay, this is a little technical. Uh, we can focus on the, uh, the title first. How many people here about heard about this term before? Covenant. Covenant. Yeah. Okay. Covenant. Okay. Okay. What is covenant? I also know it from the meet up last. Oh. Time. Okay. <laughs> we got, uh, all right. We got uh, a lot of recurring uh, guests. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming again. So for for people who have not heard about a covenant, a simple term is usually right when Alice says Bitcoin to Bob. Bob, then the Bitcoin is at Bob, right? Bob can spend it any way he wants. So covenant simply means Alice can place some constraint, an incumbent, whatever, how Bob is going to spend the coins. Okay, right? For example, you know, let's say if you are like a parent, right? You want to give some Bitcoin to your kid so he can buy some lunch, yeah. or buy some toys, whatever he wants, right? So in general, you cannot do this. You cannot control. Once you give the Bitcoin to your kid, or it's like cash, right? Once you give the cash to the kid, the kid can buy anything he wants, right? He doesn't have to buy this item you limited. So, but Bitcoin, if you have covenant, basically means only the kid can spend Bitcoin, but he can only spend it in certain way, limited way. Okay, for example, he can only buy, uh, send uh, to the another address, or you know, spend it to uh, this list of address, right? So he can. You can place some constraint on how the receiver is going to spend the coins. Okay, so keep going. This is the, the covenant. It can use a lot. It can be used in a lot of cases. Right? For example, Babylon. We just talked about in the previous talk. They can also use it to let's say do some kind of slash. If somebody is going to cheat and is found out, his his deposit is going to slash. Basically, meaning. Is you can only go to uh, some burn address, let's say all zeros. Okay, so that's one way to use it. But that's uh, the concept. We don't have to talk about all the details. So another, once we have covenant, right? You can think about it. If Alice sends to Bob, Alice can limit how Bob can send it, can spend it. And then Bob can do the same thing for the next recipient. Let's say Charlie, right? And then Charlie can do the same thing for Dave. Or Dave can do it, or whatever, right? Emily, whatever, right? So if you do this recursively, repeatedly, you have this concept, right? Called a recursive covenant. So what this means simply means you once you place some Bitcoin in this so-called recursive covenant, you can constrain how it behaves, you know, from from now from now on. Okay. So for example, let's say uh, the easiest way to think about this is implication is let's say you know in, in UTXO, right? Bitcoin use UTXO, wherever you spend it, it's gone, it's destroyed. So a lot of people, if you go online, even if you ask ChatGPT today, you can do the experiment now. You can even ask him, hey, this Bitcoin smart contract uh, can have state? The, the answer is probably no. But I'm telling you, that's probably wrong. Okay, that's the wrong answer. Okay. And most people don't know about this. So once you have a, a recursive version of Covenant, you can implement add state into Bitcoin smart contract. So the way to do it is to uh, scroll up a little bit. So let's say you have a Bitcoin contract with a simple state. It's a counter, okay, it's a, it's a counter. Every time this contract gets called, it increments this counter by one. The simple, there's the simplest uh, state for counter, right? It's zero, because I can use covenant to constrain the next output. I can say, hey, the only way you can spend this, you, you are going to increment the state, but only by one. Nothing else. If it's zero, if you want to spend coins here, the state has to be one. If you want to put it two or zero, it's not going to check out. Basically, you know, the, the lock, the, the key doesn't match, okay? So once you have this lock, from zero, you can only go to one, and from one, you can only go to two, okay? So in this way, you can embed, you can, you can implement a, or simulate state in Bitcoin transactions through a, a, you know, a series of chain transactions. That's how you, how you implement state in Bitcoin you tell someone. Okay. Um, one question. So for the state transition, you have to wait for one block to be confirmed, right? Not really. So in, in Bitcoin you have this uh, concept called unconfirmed transaction. So it's like uh, when you are do let's say you, you have mint a lot of ordinals or bitmap, whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. So you when you mint, if it's open mint, you can when you mint, you don't have to wait. Necessarily have to wait till it's mine, right? The mint time you can keep chaining because when you mint, that's going to be changed back, right? You can keep chaining it. I think that's a 25 limits. So in every 10 minutes or so, you you can 
keeps updating this for 25 times by default. There's some ways to get around this, like you broadcast this directly to some miners, but you have ways to get around this. But the simplest answer is you can you can chain your transaction, so you can update more than once uh, before it's mined. Okay. If you can have like sort of transactions, uncom unconfirmed transactions, doesn't it like leave? I, I sort of asked you about this last time. Happening where you know see about on like a chain transaction, like it's 25 changes, and then somebody just comes and replaces yeah, yeah. it with it's, state. It's exactly like uh, when you are let's say trying to mint some uh, ordinal, like you have to send. Uh, yeah. You have the same problem. If you are not careful, okay. Yeah. If you are careful, what uh, you can do is because it's, it's almost like open mint, right? This contract can be called by anybody, but you can add if you if that's what you worry. Some ways that can you can alleviate or get around it. You can say, hey, maybe this white list of people, they can, in this list, they can call, right? So you can have some kind of signature check. It's like you spend your coins. You don't worry about other people RBF you, right? Because yeah. other people, they don't have the private key. So same thing here. If you want to make it, let's say, a little bit permissioned, you can also do that by requiring certain signatures. So not everybody can, can call that transaction, can call that contract. But it's a good point, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you are you finished? I have a no, it's almost okay. Yeah. No, I think yeah, it's almost close to finish. Yeah, can you go? No, I have a, I have one? something can when you you're done. <clears throat> next, okay, okay here. So, uh, okay, how many people know Ethereum? <coughs> Ethereum, everybody. Okay, okay, nice. Perfect. So Ethereum, I think about the simplest way to think about is just a state, so-called state machine. Right? So it has a global state, and then you have each transaction. You know, update the, the state to the new transaction. Right? That's the that's the simplest way to think about. It. That's all actually all the EBM is. It's a state machine. Okay, you have a global state. Once you have a transaction, you go to a new state, and then another transaction coming. Update that tran state. You go to not next state. Right? That's the simplest way to understand. It's called a state machine. So because I showed you last time, last time you can implement state. That means in Bitcoin you can implement the same type of state machine. So that means, that's the simplest way to understand. Whatever, once you have opcat, right? We started some time ago, huh? You have opcat, opcat allows you to do so the covenant, and then you can do recursive covenant, which allows you to add state. And that means you can do state machine, and that is what Ethereum does. So that gives you the highest level. Why opcat can enable you to program any contract that's doable on Ethereum, which makes it so-called Turing code. Okay, so that's that that's the large chain of logic. Make sense? Okay. Make sense? All right. All right. Everybody gets it. So I got a very very uh, tacky audience today. Just to give another sense, you know, this is all a little bit of a let's say theoretical, but give you a very concrete example. How many people have heard about uh, Stackware or ZK Rollup? Okay, okay. Yeah, you guys really need to catch up. Right? Anyway, so for the, for the better half of the audience, you know, it's, it's the most complicated smart contract running on any blockchain today, so-called zero knowledge proof. Uh, zero knowledge proof is kind of advanced cryptography that enables you to prove something is true without telling you the, the secret. Okay, I can show you something is true. I know some answer, but I don't tell you the answer myself. But you're you're sure, you're sure you know the answer. Okay. Okay. So this is the one of the biggest so-called uh, scaling solution on other blockchains like Ethereum, so-called uh, roll up. So the roll up is also ideal. It's very easy. It's like the name suggests. Instead of let's say you have one thousand transactions, usually what you do you spend you, you send each of them to the mainnet right, and then process in in sequence sequence right. But then it's going to be take some time and also going to be expensive, right? So what do you do? You use the roll up, you pretty much bundle all these 1,000 transactions. Or it can be one million, even one billion, it doesn't matter. You can all compress them <coughs> together and send only one transaction to the mainnet. And if that transaction gets accepted, that means all these 1,000 transactions are good. That's the simplest answer. So this is the most complicated smart contract, okay? So people have I think uh, quite a few people, I think we did this on Bitcoin SV some time ago. I think Waycan, I think uh, Stackwell did some prototype. They did on uh, Bitcoin uh, use OCAT. 
you know, it's actually implementable. It's not something theoretical. This is the most complicated smart contract, and people already achieved this, but with only slight change, it's upcoming. And we are ha very happy to announce, and we are partnering with them to help them to port the, because they are working with Ethereum technology, so we are officially partnering with them to bring ZK Rock on to Bitcoin mainland. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this is huge. Yeah, this is our biggest customer. Okay. So, what else can you do? Based on anything you can Tokens, think of, yeah, and not cut off. I just give you some like uh, yeah. very typical DeFi type of uh, application. You know, they have uh, tokens and MAM, uh, custody lending, staking, custody bridge, you know, uh, Oracle, you know, whatnot, or anything you can think of. Yeah, and this, this is one unknown. Oh, you can already build. I think we. Uh, has anybody heard about Fractal? Fractal? Oh well, yeah, yeah. Oh, what nice. is that? Okay. Yeah, it's a so-called Bitcoin layer two or sidechain that's going to launch in about two weeks. So they are going to have Opcat. I think we have a lot of people have already reached us. I think you can almost see everybody, all the applications this year that we are going to experiment on Fractal first. So the idea is to, for people to get a get a real tangible you know, understanding of the capability of OCAD. So hopefully all these experiments and uh, new applications can help push OCAD on the big TC mainland. So yeah, that's it. Thanks, go to the last one. And uh, any other question? Thanks very much. Okay, join our, yeah. So you can see developer on OCAD. This is uh, the biggest OCAD builder group I created, I think less than a month ago maybe. Yes. We, we, at the last meetup, so now it's already 1,000 people almost. It's all builders there. So please scan this and uh, join us to, to do all the, I think the, the cutting edge of cat stuff. So, fractal and hopefully they do some uh, on the mainnet. Right. Thanks. And we plan to have the regular meetup uh, call on from the OP in that OP Telegram group. So if you cannot scan this uh, code, maybe you can scan the, the code, QR code on this banner, on which one's banner first, and I will throw this code into that group. Thanks a lot. So yes, um, so uh, I, uh, I, uh, do, do you guys have some, some questions about Dogway or Obika? So if not, maybe I prepare for the next keynote. So Bill, would you, yeah, do you want to 